Hello and welcome back to Breaking Ground on Dublin South FM and on iProperty Radio with myself, Carol Tallon. You can contact us on social media at iProperty Radio or email hello at iPropertyRadio.com. Joining us today, we have something a, a bit special. The National Construction Summit is coming up um, on the 21st of March, which we're very excited about. And part of that involves the Data Center and Critical Infrastructure Expo. And here to tell us more about that is Gary Connolly, founder of Host in Ireland. Gary, you're very welcome back to us. Uh, how are you? I'm good, Carol. Thank you so much for having me. Good, good. Now, look, you are, of course, a returning guest. We featured um, yourself through Host in Ireland and many of your members, because obviously the data centre in Ireland, um, it's such a critical part of the construction industry in Ireland now. But just for people not familiar, you might just remind people, what is Host in Ireland? Indeed. Um, and the name could be slightly... Um... Incorrect even at this stage, because 10 years ago-ish, when we set up Hosts in Ireland, it was very much to tell the world that uh, Ireland is open for data. And uh, what was that? Well, it was just a continuation of, and many of your listeners may remember mainframes, or they may remember mini computers, or floppy disks. So (laughs) when you think that we've been involved in that industry, data industry, for nearly six decades the data center, if you want to think of it, is just a continuation of floppy disks, CD-ROMs. We don't see them around anymore. Why? Because they're replaced by the cloud. And what's the cloud? It's a data center. So effectively, we set it up uh, uh, eight to nine years ago just to make sure that the world was aware that you didn't have to be a hyperscale, as they call it, a massive, massive company to actually rest your data here or to evolve your data here. And what we found is in that decade is that um, I would say now 90% of our partners are what we call location agnostic. What does that mean? Well, it means they'll build in Ireland, they'll operate in Ireland, but they'll just as easy do it in Athens. They'll just as easy do it in Italy. They'll just as easy do it in Frankfurt, Amsterdam, Paris. And I think that's the fundamental change that we've seen is that the ecosystem, and it's a much abused word, obviously, everybody seems to have an ecosystem, but the ecosystem from Ireland for designing, building and operating the asset class called data centers, which is the fundamental fabric of the digital infrastructure or the the uh, wave of the fourth industrial age, which we're in, is coming through and from Ireland. And that's what Host in Ireland is. We're a co-opetition. We look for the biggest. We look for the smallest. We look for the ones that actually want to lean in to help. Um, And sometimes partners do more for us than we do for them because it's a safe place for people to learn from each other. The power is in the collective. And we really, if if we use the Irish analogy of the rugby team, it's like four provinces who kill each other every weekend, suddenly put on the jersey and then going out and killing others. Or maybe that's a bad analogy, but (laughs) playing rugby um, to defeat others. We won't use to defeat. No, no, that's absolutely. I I, I think the part about uh, uh, location agnostic is one that's so important for the construction industry in Ireland, because at the end of the day, Ireland is. A, a small country with lots of potential, you know, uh, but it is still a small country. And I, I know certainly having come through the the years, the, the very difficult years of, you know, maybe uh, 2008, 2012, when the construction industry was really suffering. And what we saw was a lot of emigration. And so now to see that transition into export is so important for this industry. But is the wider industry embracing this? I, I know certainly data centers is something that's seen as very like hyper specialist. Is that the reality? I mean, how easy is it for people coming from the construction, whether they're M&E contractors or specialist contractors? How easy is it for them to get into the data center space? There's two 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 points I'd like to make. The first one, which is really interesting when you talk about emigration and stuff, I, I thought it was really interesting. And it's one of the areas that I find uh, I'm so proud of Ireland Inc. for is that, you know, 50 years ago, we only entered the EU. And, you know, our largest export at that time was live cattle, live cattle coming from Rialto, which was the largest European market. 50 years later, our largest exports are pharmaceuticals. ICT and related services, finance and other services. So to see that transition is a great exemplar that leads me into the answer in your second question is that change is inevitable um, and you you become what you see, don't you? So when you see exemplars um, of Irish companies 
that have taken adversity and turned it into an opportunity. And that's where we really find ourselves in the digital infrastructure space. Digital infrastructure is the all-encompassing bit. Data centers are a part. So when we look at uh, the years that you spoke about, 2008 to 2012, there was a lot of uh, companies looking at their future and wondering what they were going to do. Um, It coincided with what was the launch of what we called at the time the uh, superhighway, the internet, um, and therefore there was this new asset class, which was replacing floppy disks and CD-ROMs called data centers. So why did the Irish jump all over? Well, the Irish jumped all over for two reasons. One, we were ready. We had the skills, because guess what? If you've done a wafer fab in Intel, or you've done a pharmaceutical plant in Cork and Pfizer, or you've done any other mission critical or high spec, high tech, FDA approved project, you're ready to build anything. <laughs> you're, you've got health and safety in place. You've got processes and procedures that are second to none. So when a data center asset class comes along, you look at it and go, oh, actually, it's not actually as technically challenging. It may be bigger. It may have a faster program. And you can sometimes have budgets that are off the charts. But the fundamental fabrics of application, process, health and safety, and understanding the question. Often we jump to give solutions to not the question that's been asked. So between 2008 and 2012, what we found was the Irish companies had inherently built the skills over the previous two to three decades on foreign direct investment. This was another form of foreign direct investment that needed centres here. And then let's go forward another decade. And when I look at our partnerships now in Host in Ireland, 90% of those partners will be designing, building and operating everywhere and anywhere. Everywhere and anywhere. In Ireland, we've got in and around 1.6 billion per year for the asset class called data centers. EU alone on our doorstep between now and the end of this decade is 66 billion in digital infrastructure. And most of our partners, the designers, the builders, the operators are going after that market. To answer your second part of your question is data centers, maybe because they're new, maybe because they represent change, also have this two things, a fear of them. And secondly, a, a, a swagger about those that are in the middle. But after a while, isn't it amazing the way something that's technology today becomes just need to have tomorrow Mm -hmm. Um, so we're at the stage now where the talent delta the opportunity delta is actually increasing and and why is that well i think what happened in covid was the stragglers in digital infrastructure application accelerated norms of our work of our school of everything accelerated and guess what it's all to do with digital infrastructure it's all to do with modems, um, uh, fiber, uh, desktops, working from home, working from everywhere. So it might be difficult for some of the listeners to realize that if we articulate and go forward to 2030, the amount of data and infrastructure we have today compared to then is about 16.5%. Wow. So now and then, irrespective of what we feel or do right now, We're actually just in the sort of 1.0 phase. So the opportunity for companies that are either working in and around as subcontractors, looking at the data center, breaking it down. What I'm really, really so excited about is you look at a company that's like Gagamuller, for instance, that works with us. They don't build anything. They develop software for mission critical timelines, mission critical projects, kicking out the other end digital twins, unbelievable amount of innovation uh, coming out of these companies, expanding internationally, not just building stuff. Because I think data centers are an asset class, same as hotels or wafer flabs or whatever they are. But what I'm finding is the Irish companies, because they have so much work and they have to be so flexible, they're starting to adapt the likes of virtual reality and augmented reality. You got Kirby's, all these companies who are managing help desks in Ireland for people installing product in Sweden with headsets. And the main dude is in Limerick talking somebody through. And you've got all this innovation that's going on around it that was created by maybe the lockdowns. But now uh, habits were formed. 
yeah. norms were formed, and most importantly, myths were dispelled. Myths were dispelled, got rid of. But but Gary, were they? Because you know, when I when I talk to you, I have no difficulty in understanding um the not just the significance of uh digital infrastructure to Ireland's growth beyond data centers. The data centers are actually like separate that as an asset class. It is it is underpinning the growth, it is underpinning the growth of things like pharma and ICT and everything, and yet we're still coming up against resistance from Irish politicians. And look, obviously from the housing side and from other uh, construction and, and development side, we're used to this. We're used to yeah. um, this lack of understanding that really threatens, that really threatens the development. Um, the lack of understanding about the importance of data centres and and, um, and digital infrastructure to Ireland's growth. Is that is that a challenge? Do you think that myths have been dispelled or has that conversation moved on? I, I, I think... That uh, I agree with part and I disagree with part of what you've just said. I think change is a very difficult thing at any generation, whether you're migrating from a horse to a car, whether you're going from a candle to a um, a light. And the speed by which this change from di- from analog, let's call it to digitalization, has got everybody except people in the middle of it just scratching their heads and wondering, oh my goodness, what is this? What? Why do we need it? They don't even have any jobs because they're not even there yet to realize that data centers aren't built for social media only. Social media is only 7%. The other 93% is hospitals, it's services, it's everything. Um, it, it's digital uh, payment systems, it's all the schooling and everything. So that part is hard for people to adopt. The second part of your question is, And this is what we need to start thinking about. The reason we have challenges right now in Ireland is a challenge of our success. A challenge of our success. Why are we having the challenges? Because we are an optimum place globally to rest data. And guess what? When you're an optimum place to rest data, you need to keep the rain off the data. That's where you need a center. And if we look at the organic growth of how do you service an infrastructure for this like 10 times between now and 2025, it'll grow another 10 times. We have to fundamentally shift. And this is where we have objections. And this is where we have challenges is because the two largest megatrends in the world or two of the five biggest megatrends in the world right now are decarbonization and digitalization. You are not going to do decarbonization without digitalization. Why? Because all the tools and services that we use that are called smart, Smart grids, smart cards, smart cities. They're not smart for a reason other than data. So this is a confluence of these um, mega trends coming together. And then we have traditional ways of doing things. We have traditional ways of generating electricity that really hasn't changed in a 100 years. We have a small number of generators and thousands of consumers. So that is the way we've done national grids in Ireland and globally. Then you throw on top of that, Oh, we also need to decarbonize that. So when you throw those three parameters in there, I don't think there's a lack of understanding of the value of digital infrastructure. I, it, it will be just beyond my thought process for even detracting policymakers and politicians to not understand the irony of objecting to data centers on Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, which are on a data center. <laughs> I have to believe What we have is we've got a challenge of our success in Ireland, a challenge of of, of decoupling our energy electrical grid from fossil to renewable. And at that same time, trying to decarbonize the grid whilst, let's let's be honest, keep the economic benefits of data to Ireland, both the, the, the first hand, the second hand, and the third hand. And, and, uh, basically that's the challenges we have. Um, and I think that we, we always go into a negative spiral on these things. This is a challenge of our success with our relationship with data for the past six decades. Remember all those thousands of millions of floppy disks we used to send out all over the world on Hebrew and in Chinese and in, in every language. Well, now that's just a continuance of that in data centers because that's what they hold. 
Excellent. When when you make it such a compelling case, when you explain it so clearly, and I think maybe that's something that doesn't happen all the time. So it's something that absolutely we welcome. And um, Gary, as I mentioned at the start, you and some of the Host in Ireland members will be speaking at the Data Centre and Critical Infrastructure Expo, uh, which is part of the National Construction Summit on the 21st of March at the Sports Ireland campus in Blanchettstown. What can attendees can expect? What can they expect to hear and to see? Thank you so much for asking that question, because one of the things we're trying to do is make the industry sound less daunting. So we're trying to actually we have four sessions. and I hope I get remember them all. But the first one is uh, data centers in Ireland, WTF. And it's not what you think. It's what, <laughs> what what's the future? <laughs> so that would be about, OK, Ireland, 1.6 billion every year for the next so many years. What's the change? What's the opportunity? Show show delegates what's going on there. A lot of it would be around the grid, the decarbonisation of the grid. Get a full sense of, you know, if if a data centre was a bakery, we need to make sure that the corn and the flour is of the t- highest and greenest quality. So that's where that food chain is. The second one will be um, all around talent creation, retention, and attraction of talent. Because what I've said earlier is traditionally in the construction industry or aspects of it, we always thought that you had to be an apprentice or an engineer or this, that, and the other. Whereas actually what we're finding now is we need people with broader business skills. We need people with broader digital skills, like like uh, um, uh, digital twins or developing or coding, no code, low code. There's no industry, including construction, that isn't a digital infrastructure technical. So we need them. We need apprentices. We see it really cool now that apprentices are back in fashion. Why? Because I think my generation were the first where our mothers love saying, oh, my Gary is going to college, the first generation. But now we find that so many kids drop out. So apprentices are back. We'll have a session on that. The other session that we're going to have on is going to be meet the buyer. Probably really important that we don't talk about enough. The people who are actually purchasing the equipment. The people who are at the top of the apex who are actually putting the POs out through the professional services. So we're going to have operators, people who own, fund the data centers um, here and also internationally. And they say, well, what are you looking for? And well, how do you judge people? And, you know, all that type of stuff. Because we, we spend our lives this side of the purchase order. It's nice to understand without being at a table where you're in discussion What's in the mind of the buyer, the meet the buyer? And then finally, we have a, a, a report that was recently done by one of our partners that I'm just going to do a one-on-one talking through. Um, again, an architectural practice that is in Ireland doing more, five times more data center work outside of Ireland than in Ireland. Incredible. That's the sort of the full stop at the end of the day. So if people can drop, drop in, drop out, we'll have partners. I'll be there. Michelle will be there. We, uh, um, can't uh, uh, guarantee that there'll be uh, many jokes or laughs, but we can guarantee that we'll be smiling. Very good. We'd, we'd expect nothing less, Gary. Thank you so much. And I look forward to actually dropping by on the day. I'll be I'll be at the National Construction Summit for the day myself. And I look forward to dropping by. That's the Data Centre and Critical Infrastructure Expo, which is part of the National Construction Expo, taking place on the 21st of March at the Sports Ireland campus in Blanchettstown. We need to take a quick break now. Stay tuned. 